Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at how the open subdiv modifier works when it comes to uh, modeling. Now from all the previous videos we made about modeling we basically saw that the all of the time we were using the turbo smooth modifier to get the smooth shapes that we need for our model. So here in my scene I have again a very simple uh, plane that has been extruded and beveled once so we get this step like structure. Now if we ter uh, put on a turbo smooth modifier what we get is this nice looking um, round edges and the flow is well it's making it make it's making it look as if it has a smooth transition. Now we saw that if we want to have a sharper transition, we would have to go in and chamfer the edges and add in more extra uh, details by adding more extra edges. So now, what is open uh, subdiv? Well, open subdiv is a modifier that works similarly like turbo smooth but instead of adding extra geometry it is going to try and taper the edges together so let's see how that works i'm going to delete this turbo smooth and from the modifier list i'm going to choose the open subdiv modifier now right off the bat you're going to notice that there really isn't too much uh different in Honestly, everything looks the same. So what gives? Why would we use open subdiv? Well, the first thing is the iterations. I can uh, increase it just like you would do in turbo smooth, and you would get more geometry. That geometry can be seen if we turn off the uh, ISO line. So as you can see, more geometry. It simply uh, quadrifies all of the uh, polygons, and it gives us more polygons to work with. All right, so. Now, if we take a look at the options that we have here, the first thing is the vertex boundary in the open subdiv control. Now, this simply controls how the vertexes are going to be um, calculated. By default, this is put on edges and corners. If you put it just on edges, notice what is going to happen on all of our corners. They're going to get tapered in. So if you don't want to get, uh, get this result, simply leave this on corners. The other thing is the UV boundary. Now, like I said, the open subdiv doesn't add in extra geometry. It simply takes the already existing geometry, which is a major uh, plus for it, as it's not giving up extra geometry, so the UVs will not be disturbed. So if you have proper UVs on your model and you're using open subdivs, you shouldn't be getting too much UV stretching. Now, here's the other thing. So how would we go about and adding uh, sharper edges without actually adding geometry? Well, that is where another modifier comes into play that really works well with open subdiv and that is the crease set modifier now once you, uh, once you select this crease set make sure you pull it down beneath the open subdiv in the hierarchy here so the open subdiv is actually working on top of the crease set so what does the crease set do well, it's a very easy to work with uh, modifier as it really has only two things that you can select. You have vertices and you have edges. So let's, let's go ahead and see how this would work. First thing that we want to do is de define where we would like to have those uh, sharper edges. Let's just say this transition here. I want to have a sharper edge. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do is select the entire line. Hold on, Control. Select the bottom one. Select this one and this one. Now I can either choose to have the middle one if I want to have a straight line, uh, but I'm going to leave it for for now. So now, now the next step is you want to make a set or a control handle the way to do it is simply come over here and let's name this top control 
enter. As soon as you uh, press enter, you're going to notice that here, now we got a new field that says stop control, and we have this slider on top of it. So let's see what this does. I'm going to turn on my open subdiv, and I'm going to turn on show end result so I can see what's happening exactly. I'm going to turn off my edge, and now take a look at what happens when we slide this number for the, uh, next to the top control. As we are sliding it in, all the geometry is tapering and it's giving us that uh, nice roundness. So as you can see, we're not adding any extra geometry. Let's turn on the display. We are not adding any extra geometry and we're getting this look. So like I said, all of the edges where we need them to uh, have the sharper transition are getting tapered together and are creating that sharp look. So this works really well for complicated uh, scenarios as well. So this was a very easy uh, sharp turn. But what happens if we have something like, uh, well, some kind of, a, well, let me delete both of these some kind of a cylinder here. So in the middle here, we have, we, well, let's go ahead and simply make one. I'm gonna come here, create one cylinder, drag it out. Ah, fine. Yeah, something like this. I want to move this beneath and in this case I'm simply going to use this as a cutting helper. In the modify I'm going to choose cut with the snap I'm simply going to use the vertices from that one just so it can help me cut my model like this like this. All right as soon as that is done we have what we need we can now delete that bottom cylinder and what we are left is with uh, this form. Now I'm gonna just clean up a bit so target weld this to that side mm, go like this there we go in the middle delete select the border hold down shift and extrude upwards or downwards whatever uh, need whatever you need so I'm gonna scale it on the Z until it's totally flat I could have just made it planar but same um, same thing happens now uh, I'm gonna cap this on the, the top here is an uh, here's a little nifty trick you should remember when you're capping something like this you can always uh, either go like the manual way of uh, going cap and then uh, you go and connect everything or you can so like all right let me show you so cap and then you would go and cut from there to there and there to there to get those uh, edges or instead you can uh, shift over to edge deselect two edges on the opposite side and bridge them together that is going to create the same exact result all right, so we got this form happening over here. Now, again, uh, we would have to add another crease set, a new one, because sometimes when you're uh, working on a already existing crease set and you add more geometry, it can, well, sometimes it can make some issues and create some unwanted results. So again, simply select those guys again create a top crease, create set, that is going to create our set. Uh, let's manually now select these guys and let's select the ones in the bottom as well. Um, bottom crease. Now I want to select the bottom of my, my cylinder. So bottom cylinder and let's go one more on the top so top cylinder as well
All right. Now what we have to do, turn on or put on a open subdiv modifier, put in some extra iterations so we have some geometry to work with. And now once we get back to our crease set, we can deal with the sharpness of our edges. So like we did previously, let's simply go ahead and crease the top. We can see we got that same exact look. Now we can crease the bottom. And you can see that we get this nice looking edge flow. No issues here. And the edge comes to the bottom of our cylinder and kind of stops. So no problems here as well. It's even transitioning well into this gooey cylinder. And now once we add in the support edge for our bottom cylinder or the crease for a bottom cylinder, you can notice that, well, that cylinder is holding that form pretty well. And once we put the support for the top cylinder, it really turns into a nice looking geometry. So let's turn on the, or turn on uh, the isoline display and we'll see that we haven't add, added any extra geometry. For example, even if we put it on a very, very low setting of one, it's not adding any extra geometry. So it doesn't look, the transitions are really visible, but you can notice right away, we have some effect happening. So the more you have, the stronger that result is. Now we can do the same thing here, add in more uh, forms or more shapes, but in the end, it all boils down to selecting which edges would you like to have creased and then simply controlling them from the crease set uh, selection. And more or less, that's about what you would have to know about the open subdiv modifier in conjunction with the crease set modifier. And that would be it for this video. I hope you guys had fun. You managed to learn something new. If that is the case, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and take care. I'll see you all in the next video.